Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, just stay standing with me a second. If you're standing, yeah, it's so good. Some of you are quick. You're really quick. I used to be quick. But uh, if you have your cell phone, if you could just put that on mute, that would be amazing. I speak for about 35 minutes. Really, really uh, important, timely, powerful message for today. Just also tonight, our Jesus gathering, we've been doing some adjustment with it. It actually starts at 6 o'clock. We're going to intercede from 6 to about 6.30. Then we'll enter to a worship time. And then we'll have some teaching and then some activation. And last week was just so amazing what God did. So if you are new or that it, it's a bit newer, the Lord put on my heart that we were to do a Jesus gathering on these Sunday nights uh, in 2023. And uh, we're just responding with obedience. I believe that God has so much. So I invite you to that. And uh, I checked on TV. There's literally nothing going on from six. <laughs> to eight. It's, you know, the, the upgrade would be here. I feel so, sorry for anybody that's going to be at home because it's going to be so much better here. And will you lift your hands with me? We're just going to welcome Holy Spirit. Yeah. So Holy Spirit, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to respond to your word. Let the word of God dwell in us richly this morning. Father, I pray that every person would have a song. It says, have a song and a hymn and a spiritual song. Sing and make melody in your heart to the Lord. May we be such a joyful people, filled with your love, filled with your joy, filled with your goodness. Lord, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you for the church, for your body. I thank you for what you've done. And so today, Lord, as we continue through 2023, I thank you that we are flourishing. You are causing us to flourish in your word, in your will, in your ways. And everybody said, amen. amen. You can be seated. You can be seated. Thank you. So good. In the month of January, we uh, began our uh, 2023 theme, theme that Jesus is the gospel. We looked um, and really spoke from Luke chapter 4, Luke chapter 5, Luke 15. Our equipping team did such a great job. I'm so thankful for them. And uh, we had different ones minister. Presented the gospel, the good news of Jesus, that he came to save, heal, and deliver. This past month, we've had over 20, in January, we've had over 20 people give their lives to Christ. Raise their hand, come down. Amen. Yeah. We had nine baptisms last week. Isn't that amazing? We're so thankful. Jesus transforming lives, lives as the gospel is being preached. This month, we'll spend more time talking about Jesus and his church. So I'm going to spend some time, I really feel called to talk about the ecclesia, the church, the body of Christ. Jesus loves his church. That's what I'm going to say right off the bat. Jesus loves his church. And you know, I, I think, there, I have a lot to say, so I have to, a lot to say besides this, so I have messages on this topic. So this stuff kind of seeps out a little bit. But I, I just want us to calibrate a little thing here in our own hearts that it is easy to criticize other churches. We don't do it here. But it's, it's easy to do that. Very often when you feel like God's calling you out of a church to go be a part of a different fellowship, sometimes we have to, to kind of build a case to do that. And, and I just want to encourage you. If God's called you here, welcome. I love you. Welcome to Life Church 7. If you've left the place and it is a bit messy and you need to go back and do some cleanup, man, do that with the life and the love and the goodness of Jesus. Do as best you can uh, make those things. And then if there's still some things that, that are in your heart in a different place, pray for the church and bless the church. Amen. You know, I know that it's hard for us to believe that in some, if sometimes we walk away from a place and we're thinking, well, there's not very many of those that are going to heaven. But the truth is probably almost all of them are. <laughs> it's Jesus' church. We're called to love one another. The devil is the accuser of the brethren. So let's not fall in his camp. 
Amen? Amen. And if you can't agree with somebody, just agree to disagree, but just keep the love of Jesus on. Keep the goodness of God. And um, man, I, I just really got a, a good word for 2023 that we were to, um, that we were to really watch over our words, to watch over what we speak out of our mouth and, uh, and, and to be careful what we say and to, you know, to build up and to strengthen, to encourage. The Holy Spirit's job is to correct and, and, and to change. And I, I, for other churches, I'm not called to correct them. The Holy Spirit, he's, it's his full-time job. <laughs> he's really good at it. What I need to do is have the Lord search my heart and wash me and cleanse me. And over this region, we want the moving and the presence and the, the power of the Holy Spirit. I am praying that all of our churches who are proclaiming Christ in our region are gonna have parking problems, multiple services. I'm praying that, that I can meet worn out pastors on Monday that had 12, 15 services on Sunday and just all these lost people coming to Christ. And the seven cities being transformed by God's goodness and His grace. Amen? So online, I just bless the seven cities. I bless the churches. I declare the goodness of the Lord. Every pastor that's preaching today, I pray God's grace and His anointing on you. Yeah, preach the Word of God. Yeah, quit fighting with them. Just preach the Word of God. Thank you, Lord. God is so good. God is so good. I'll tell you a funny story. I didn't tell it in the first service. It's funny now. It wasn't funny when it happened. It was not this last Tuesday, but Tuesday before I was putting um, uh, water into my refrigerator. It's a little refrigerator in my office. And I was down putting the ref water in and I uh, wasn't paying attention. And I moved the refrigerator a little bit. And I have this four foot high, three foot wide a quarter inch, the heavier, thick mirror standing on the refrigerator. And so it was awesome. And uh, so I, I, I had my head down and all of a sudden a gun went off. It went kaboom. And this mirror came down, hit me on top of the head, exploded into pieces. And, uh, and pieces went everywhere. I got 12 stitches in my hand and my elbow and got hit on the head. And, um, and I was walking into the hospital over there. Uh, Gary was making sure that I was gonna actually go. I, there was blood all over the place. It was awesome. And, uh, and uh, I was a little bit dazed, but Norwegians were designed for mirrors. To, you know, we, it's just kind of a bad day. So I'm walking into the hospital and, and I prayed on the way in the hospital. I said, I said, Lord, I ask that you would turn what the enemy meant for evil and turn it for glorious good. And as the doctor was stitching on my hand, his opening up part of the conversation was, he said, could you tell me, when, when he found I was a pastor, he said, could you tell me what's different about your religion versus any other religion? And for the next hour and 25 minutes, and he's slowing down the stitches. <laughs> he's asking me one question after another. He's talking, and we're talking about Jesus. Yeah, his name is Victor, and we're believing. Victor, if you're here, I don't know if you're here or not, but if you're here, I am believing that he will be transformed by the power and the goodness of Jesus. And, and also, you know, just such a good word. What the Lord put in my heart was that I am to expect seven years, the next seven years, to be years of breakthrough. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Everybody that agrees with that, say man. <laughs> yeah. So good, so good. This month we're spending time and we're gonna talk about Jesus and his church. Jesus is with his disciples in this setting. If you have Mark, Matthew chapter 16, if you turn there in your Bibles, and we're gonna read uh, verses 16 through, I think, 20. I'm sorry, 13 through 20. Jesus is with his disciples in Caesarea Philippi. He asked his disciples some powerful questions. Some questions that we may need to ask ourselves today. So let's go to Matthew chapter 16.
beginning with verse 13. Let's, let me just read this passage of scripture. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, and let's all say this, who do people say the Son of Man is? Well, they reply, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah, one of the prophets. Then he asked them, who, let's all say this together, but who do you say I am? But who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Verse 17 says, Jesus said, you are blessed, Simon, son of John, because many, because my father in heaven has revealed this to you. Who revealed that Jesus is the Messiah? Yeah, the Father in heaven. You did not learn this from any human being. Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock, and upon this rock I will build my church, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven, and whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. Then he sternly warned the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. So here's my big idea today. Jesus is building his church. Now I want you to just say, Jesus is building his church. That's what he said he would do and he's doing it. That's the rest of the big idea. That's what he said he would do and he's doing it. I think what we, we need to remove language out of our mouth that disagrees with Jesus building his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Like, I don't see the church winning. Oh yeah, when Jesus died on the cross, when he rose again, we are winning. The kingdom is forcefully advancing. I just want us to see this this morning. Well, I, you know, I just don't see things happening Nobody asks you for your opinion. <laughs> Agree with God's word. Jesus said, I'm gonna build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Keep repeating what Jesus said. I mean, how far do you really see anyway? Do you see all over the world at one time? Are you omnipresent? Are you omniscient? God, God who sees it all says, I'm gonna build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. You know what the trick of the enemy is? Is to get us to believe that actually the church is it's not working out like Jesus planned. It's not going that good. Disciples kind of thought that, but then after the day of Pentecost, 3,000 people were saved in one day. Next week, 5,000 people were saved. In the last 2,000 years, there's some 3.2 billion Christians on the planet across the world. We're believing for a billion soul harvest. Oh yes, the church is forcefully advancing. You go, well, I don't see it on the news. Well, you know, the devil and the newscasters are working together. There's a lot of things on the news you can't believe. I'm not gonna repeat what they're saying. Let's pre repeat what the Word of God says. Yes. Jesus is building his church Amen. and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Right. It's so good. Number one, who do you say I am? Verse 13, Jesus asks his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? Well, they replied, some say G John, John the Baptist, some say Elijah, others say Jeremiah or others, or one of the other prophets. Then Jesus asked them, but who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. During his ministry here on earth, Jesus asked lots of questions. Do you notice that really smart people ask lots of questions? Lawyers, I, I'm not saying like they're super smart, but they ask lots of questions. That's pretty much their job. If you're a lawyer, don't be offended. <laughs> it wasn't that Jesus lacked information or he was out trying, seeking knowledge or trying to get more information about people. 
or he wasn't trying to gain insight and understanding. Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. He only did what he saw the Father doing. So Jesus walked in power and authority. When Jesus was asking questions, Jesus wasn't looking for answers. He was interested in exposing what a person believed. That's why he asked the question, who do you say that I am? He was gonna find out what they believe. This is such a powerful question. Who do you say I am? It is the question that exposes the heart. So I just wanna go back to it. Who do you say I am? Literally. Who do you say Jesus is? Personally. When somebody asks you, I had an opportunity for an hour and 20 minutes to describe, to explain, and to share Jesus with a doctor as he's stitching my hand. I can tell him about this mighty God, and my hand's bleeding, and he's just, we're just having this amazing time talking about Jesus. But the question is, for, for in the balcony, who do you say that Jesus is? What is your testimony? Can you give a testimony that Jesus is the Savior, the Son of God, that you believe in Jesus, that you've put your faith and your trust in him? Can you describe Jesus? We've lived in a time where, sadly, even in our theology, and, 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 and I hear it, I heard it for 20 years, and one of the things in this season, I have just, I'm doing my best to shift a wrong thing that's been taking place in this, inside the church. And that is, when you come to Christ, you don't come to faith. You don't come to faith in popcorn. You don't come to faith in... Um, in yourself, you don't come to faith in this or that. You come to faith in Jesus. You're not crossing some imaginary line and then someday like, you know, I, I, I've, never asked, I've never confessed Jesus to be my Savior and Lord. I've never asked him to forgive me of my sins. But I've just, I just realized that I've come across this imaginary line of faith. Faith has to be attached to Jesus. How many see that? Well, I'm just coming to faith. Faith in what? Faith in the government? Faith in our monetary system? Faith in our military? Faith in Chinese balloons that fly over? What are you putting your faith in? Your faith has to be put in Jesus Christ alone. And we need to attach I have put my faith and trust in Jesus alone and not leave faith by itself. Scripture says, have faith in God. But I just want to bring a context is that, you know, Pastor Wes, it just seems like you're wound up about that. And we've heard lots of people say that. I know, I have. But as a senior leader and involved in ministry, I want to help correct something. It's faith in Jesus. I have faith in Jesus. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Jesus is the gospel. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation to those who believe in his name. I just want to say this as kindly as it comes. It's a coward who can't confess the name of Jesus. It's a person who is afraid to confess the name that's above every name. What would keep me from confessing that Jesus is Lord? What would keep me in a conversation when a person says, well, who do you believe in? Why would I be him hawing around like, well, I believe in a lot of things and blah, 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 you know, and it's kind of uncomfortable. Could we just move to a different conversation rather than saying, oh, I'm so glad you're talking about my best friend, the one who saved my soul, the one who redeemed my life, the one who took me from terrible darkness into glorious light, the one who stood, the one who was hung on a cross and bled and died for me, the one who rose again. Oh, by the way, his name is Jesus. He is the King of kings and he is the Lord of lords. 
And my question is, after a couple years of going through what we've gone through, I'm wondering if there hasn't been a loss of boldness to proclaim the name of Jesus. The scripture says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Christ from the dead, you'll be saved. I believe that there is an impartation this morning for fresh boldness. To boldly proclaim that Jesus is King, that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is my Savior. And if you would like just a fresh impartation, the Holy Spirit is here of boldness this morning. I'm gonna invite you just to stand. And I'm just gonna ask the Holy Spirit to release fresh boldness in the, for you just to be able to just stand in the name of Jesus and wisely. I'm not talking about going out and being uh, unwise about how we share Jesus. But when we get the opportunity, we stand up and there is a life in the presence of God ignited into our heart. And we look at that person and we realize they're wanting to know about Jesus, the one that I love. If you're right now just going like, I'm just kind of bored with this, then I'm just gonna ask the Holy Spirit to free you from the, the cares of life. If you're bored with the name of Jesus, then that's a trick of the enemy to get you on a whole different path because Jesus is the way, Jesus is the truth, and Jesus is the life, he's the path. So if you'd lift your hands with me, I'm just gonna release. Holy Spirit, yeah, just hold them up to the Lord. And I'm just, Holy Spirit, would you just release right now? Boldness, a fresh boldness, fresh fire. All over this building, fresh fire, I pray. Right now in Jesus' name. We make this whole thing about you, Jesus. We make this king, this is your kingdom and your purposes. And right now, Holy Spirit, by the power by your power and your grace, would you begin to breathe and to blow into each one of us a fresh boldness to love the name of Jesus, to boldly declare the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that right now. I pray that right now. Thank you, Lord. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Everybody said, amen, you can be seated. Thank you, Lord. We continue on. Number two, so good. What rock is Jesus building his church on? Verse 17 and 18. Listen to the response of Jesus. You are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from a human being. Simon Peter had this revealed to him by the heavenly Father. How was Peter able to answer the question Jesus was asking? He received a revelation. Say revelation. revelation. So one of the things that is an ongoing thing that we need today is we need a, a fresh revelation of Jesus given to us by the Holy Spirit. That, re, that removes boredom. That removes indifference. That removes the fear of man. I'm getting more and more revelation of who Jesus is. I'm getting filled with his life and his presence, his power. It completely transforms what I think, how I think and, and what I'm doing. That's such a good word. Jesus said, you did not learn this from any human being. Now I say to you that you are Peter, which is Petros, it's the Greek word for Petros, it's a little rock. Now I say to you that you are Petros, you are Peter, which means rock, a little rock, and upon this rock, and the word in the Greek is Petra, it's a big rock, I will build my church and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. The question that jumps out of this passage is, what rock is Jesus building his church on? A little Petros or the big one? Peter is a small rock. 
or is Jesus the solid rock, the cornerstone of our salvation? Is he the rock that we're building our lives on? Oh, just in case you weren't wondering, we're doing it on Jesus. It is an easy answer for all of us to come to the conclusion that Jesus, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. When, Peter, when, they, when the question was asked, whom do you say I am? When Jesus asked the question, they didn't look back and go, well, Jesus is, well, Peter's a little rock and we're gonna, we're gonna build our lives on Peter. There wasn't one disciple that mentioned Peter. They said, you are the rock. You are the Christ, the Messiah, the son of the living God. And I know that there's other groups of people in other denominations that have esteem apostolic people like Peter or Paul, or different apostles, and put them in positions, kind of like papal positions in those places. But um, from Scripture, it's not biblical. That's just what I want to say. From scriptural, Scripture, it's not biblical. Only G Jesus is our paraclete. He, Jesus is our intercessor. So Jesus is at the right hand of the Father right now making intercession for you and for me. We don't pray through another person. I don't have people come up to me and say, hey, Pastor Wes, could you pray for me for whatever? I said, no, let you come and pray and I'll agree with you to pray. You don't need me to pray for you. You need to pray to Jesus in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit and we'll pray and we'll agree. Some of you are just staring at me. It's awesome. You have such authority and such power. And the design is never for this to be a hierarchy. Jesus, that's why you have in scripture it says that Jesus is Lord. We only have one Lord. And you know what's really cool? I'll just skate along with this a little bit, a little different in the first service. There's no penance in the kingdom. Well, Pastor West, I think you should ought to feel bad for what you've done. Oh, yeah. Godly sorrow works repentance. But I'm not going to spend time crawling on my knees for something that's already been paid for by Jesus. I'm not going to undo the work of the cross by making my knees bloody, for crawling on my knees for, to pay for my sins. And listen, it's, it, this has seeped into Protestants. There's many of us that think that, you know, for a season, I need to pay for what I did. So what did Jesus pay for? So when does his righteousness get replaced with our righteousness? Can you see this with me? What I'm attracting you to is Jesus. I believe the Holy Spirit in these upcoming days is gonna clean up wrong theology all over. And I bless the churches that are proclaiming Christ. And he's gonna clean it up. I'm just saying for us here in this church, I just wanna make it clear the Jesus that we're talking about and who we're trusting in. When you say that Jesus is Lord and Savior, he is Lord and Savior, he is King, he is Master, and Jesus, and Jesus is the rock that we are building on. Thank you, Lord. Jesus is the rock of revelation. The ongoing work of the Holy Spirit is to reveal Jesus to you, the rock of our salvation. Let me give you some examples. After Jesus died on the cross, Matthew 28, Jesus appeared to Mary and revealed himself to Mary. Jesus then went and revealed himself to two disciples on the way to Emmaus. And when he broke bread, he revealed himself and he disappeared. Jesus then met all these disciples in the upper room and he revealed himself to them. Acts 1, Jesus showed, appeared again to the disciples and he gave them instruction. He says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you'll be a bold and gracious witness. 
On the road to Damascus, Jesus reminds, uh, reveals himself to Saul, who is persecuting Christ's church. And Saul is converted to Paul, who writes one third of the New Testament. Paul is asking the Father to reveal Jesus to the church at Ephesus. And he writes Ephesians chapter three, verses 14 through 19. When I think of all of this, I fall on my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you. Oh, I think you should just stand and put your hands over your heart and receive this revelation that Paul prayed over. Yeah, just go ahead. This is what Paul prayed over the church at Ephesus and it's a prayer for us today. It's a revelation. Just close your eyes and put your hand over your heart and just receive this, just this fresh work of the Spirit of God. I pray that from his glorious, Jesus' glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you, Life Church 7, with inner strength through his Spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your heart as you trust in him. Life Church 7, your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. Say yes, Lord. Lord. And may you have the power to understand. Say, Lord, give me the power to understand. As all God's people should. How wide? Say how wide. How How long? How How high? How How deep? deep? His His love is. May you experience Life Church 7, the love of Christ, though it is too great to fully understand. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Jesus is the rock, the foundation of our faith the chief cornerstone. He is the rock of revelation. Holy Spirit, I just stop here and we apprehend this word right right now. Take each one wider and deeper and higher and longer in your love. Free us from lies about ourselves. Free us from performance. Free us from striving. May we be empowered. May we just have a, such a dose of the love of God in our souls that it transforms how we think about you and how we think about others, how we think about ourselves. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Wow. How wide, how high, how long, how deep. Yeah, Lord, do it right now. Online to those that are watching. I pray over them right now in Jesus' name. Every person watching. They just begin to sense the presence of the Holy Spirit expanding into their mind and their emotions. The depth and the width and the breadth of the length of God's love. May we be immersed in your love this morning, Lord. Father, I thank you. I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You can be seated. My final thing, as the ushers go ahead and prepare to re- prepare and, re- and uh, serve all of us in communion, we're gonna have communion this morning. If you could just hold on to the elements while everyone is being served and we'll do communion at the very end. Number three, what rock of, of revelation are you building your life on? Life Church 7, in the balcony to everyone here, What rock of revelation are you building your life on? The design is that you build your life on a rock of revelation. What are you building your life on? Jesus in Matthew 7, verses 24 to 27, that's at the very end of his Sermon on the Mount, and listen to what he said. He said, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise like a man who builds his house on a solid rock. Through the ra- though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the wind beats against the house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on the sand. 
When the rains and the floods come and the winds beat against the house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. Thank you, Lord. What rock of revelation are you building your life on today? Would you just bow your heads as, unless you're be, just getting communion, just go ahead and get your communion. So Holy Spirit, we just begin. We take this moment. And we just begin to allow you to touch us. We say, Jesus, you are the rock. You are our source. You are our salvation. You are the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Lord, right now, all over this building, all over this building, Jesus, we set our focus and our attention on you. I'm asking, Lord, right now, as people are, are, are just spending time waiting on you, that you're giving upgrades right now. Give, Holy Spirit, would you give a fresh revelation of who Jesus is to every person here? Every person here. Thank you, Lord. You are our foundation. You're our source, Lord. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you've received your communion, would you just stand with me? Holy, 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 holy is the Lord. Holy, holy is the Lord. We worship you, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you, we worship you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. I just begin to sing that out with me. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. You are the mighty King, the master of everything. Holy, holy is the the Lord, you are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Sing it again. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve. and do communion this morning. It's a wonderful opportunity. <laughs> In the first service, a person gave their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're here today, you say, you know what, Pastor Wes, I know about Jesus. I just actually don't know him personally. I have never asked Jesus to come into life, my life to forgive me of my sins. And actually, I want him to be the Lord of my life. Today, I wanna fully surrender my life to Jesus. I want Jesus to be my Lord. I want this resurrected Savior. I want this Jesus to be my Savior. If that's you this morning, would you just raise your hand? Say, today I want Jesus. I just want to give my life to Jesus. I want to put my faith and trust in Him. Yeah, look in the balcony. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. I see a hand back there. Anyone else? Yeah, the hand right there, yeah. Just lift your hand up boldly. We're not ashamed. Yeah, 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 just hold your hand up boldly. Just say, I want Jesus. 
<laughs> it's already it. I want Jesus. I, want, I confess that he is the Lord and Savior. Just hold your hand up. I want Jesus. Yeah, several people. Yeah. So we're just going to pray this prayer together before we do communion. It's awesome. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Pray this with me. Let's all pray this together. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I put my faith, my trust in you alone for salvation. Jesus, today, I confess you as my Savior and Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Whoa, let's give the Lord praise. Come on, all of the building. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Would you take the bread and just hold it up? Lord Jesus, we thank you for your body that is broken for me. You said, take, eat, do this. So Lord, I thank you that once and for all, your body was broken so that we could be healed. And by your stripes, we are healed. We are healed. And we receive the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ today. In Jesus' name, shall we partake together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hold the cup up with me. Lord, thank you for the covenant of the New Testament. Thank you for the blood of the new covenant. Thank you, Lord, that you spilled your blood on the cross once and for all, that I could be washed clean and made pure and made holy before you. And so, Lord, today we enter to the new covenant. It's a covenant of faith and confidence and trusting in you alone for salvation. It's a covenant of mercy. It's a covenant of grace. It's such an upgrade from the old covenant. Today, Lord, we drink and we partake of what you have fully accomplished for us. In Jesus' mighty name, let's partake together. Thank you, Lord. Would you just lift your hands and just begin to praise Jesus? Come on, let's all. Lord Jesus, we praise you. We give you thanks. We give you glory. We give you honor. We magnify your name, Lord. 